where is Creed? Creed? Here. Quality assurance. Your job. I really think you screwed the pooch on this one, Creed. Because of you, the entire company is in jeopardy. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. Now, this uh, this past week, I alluded to this video that I was going to be making when I did my Hulk number one review from Dottie Cates. If you haven't watched that one, I think you'll give it a gander. I think it uh, it's an interesting comic book that raises some interesting questions. Now, in that co in that conversation or that that review that I did, I mentioned that I have a name, and I'm sure I'm not the first one to dub this era of comic books this, but you know, every era has a name. And me personally, I'm considering this the broken era of comic books. There are so many things that are broken, uh, you know, within the comic book industry. It's not just the writers are breaking the characters. It's not just the universes don't exactly work anymore. The continuity is broken. You know, trust is broken with the consumer. How long will this last? I'm not really sure. What exactly did it start? I think some people would say it started maybe 10 years ago. Some people maybe five years ago. I think we're well into it. I don't think we're at the beginning of the broken era, but I think we're all starting to understand and really see it for what it is. I think a lot of people, um, you know, obviously there are some takes on characters or stories that really do make sense and they stand out uh, against their contemporaries because of it, because so many other things within the industry are, are broken. And you could see a, a lot of the writers that really brought this stuff in and tried to make it cool. They were much heralded at the time, like a Matt Fraction is the one that I'll use as the biggest example. Matt Fraction was the hottest writer in Kyle books there for a while. He ain't the hottest anything anymore because his shtick got old. People got on to him. And there are other people, other writers kind of doing what he was doing or introduced that was his uh, trademark that are doing it better, quite frankly. But if you look at the the uh, the wake of Matt Fraction's uh, you know, destruction, specifically through Marvel Comics, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Every Almost every character he touched, he damaged long term. Obviously, um, you know, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, Clint Barton is a big deal right now. And they're certainly borrowing a lot of visuals from what Matt Fraction's run had as far as uh, uh, Oja's art. And that's all fine and dandy because the art wasn't the problem. But if you look at what he did to Clint Barton, that's happened to a lot of characters now. And a lot of people, for some reason, have decided that, that that's one of their major influences. Another writer that would have been an even bigger influence but didn't do things quite to the degree at least when they first took off is brian michael bennis obviously he's fallen out of favor because it turns out everything he touched eventually he just started breaking as well the creators at this point and i don't want to just say creators the the the, the teams that are behind these books that are the caretakers of these characters in these universes the ones that are supposed to get these things and pro tell us the the most dynamic, coolest stories that we haven't heard before, but but new takes on the character, but not you know, but but utilizing the character to the fullest. At this point, they've damaged mainstream heroes, where the the comic books actually read like parodies of themselves now. I think if if you went back and you were a a Batman fan in the seventies, eighties, nineties even the early double odds and you jumped forward in time or, or somebody came back in time and they gave you a Tom King, uh, two trades of Tom King, Batman. I think it would read comical. It would read like a mad magazine. Same thing with, uh, you know, Superman right now, you know, when, when Superman was in his heyday or even when he wasn't, you know, even in, you know, uh, as early as the two thousands or somebody reading uh, Peter J. Tomasi's, Superman, if you went and handed them what was happening to Superman, specifically, you know, we'll go with Brian Michael Bendis time. I think, you know, that reader would have laughed in your face. It's like, this can't be real. This can't be what follows what Peter J. Tomasi and Dan Jurgens are doing with the character. And um, and that, that's a problem. It's it's not just obviously a DC problem. It's a Marvel's. A, it's a really big problem there. You know, if you look at all the characters that they've really destroyed, like if, if I like House of X, Powers of Ten, but 
not exactly the most true take on on the X Men, the mutants plight within the six one six. I I thought it was interesting that they turned things on their head, that they were no longer you know the um, the disenfranchised. They were no longer the the marginalized characters within the universe that they had uh, you know understood that they had the power. They kind of flipped it on its head. They you know, um, essentially segregated themselves from society and started utilizing everything to their their ability to kind of hold it over humans and you know the bullies or the bully became the bullies right i thought that was an interesting take on the character but really it's just more the same where you're you're breaking what the characters represent and um you know essentially all the x-men bad x-men are bad guys now even even a character like nightwing or nightwing nightcrawler who's so grounded you know in his faith He's turned his back on his faith. It's not even a core component out of his of his character anymore. He's given it up. He's going to create a new a new religion, a new theology based on all the things that are happening on Krakoa. That if if a, a Nightcrawler fan, you know, twenty years ago read that story and they said, "Do you think Nightcrawler would buy into this?" No, he wouldn't. He would be, uh, you know, you he would be shouting from the rooftops, "What you're doing is evil. What you're doing is wrong." And, you know, in this new modern, the modern Marvel, the modern X-Men universe, he's bought into a hook, line, and sinker. Not, and not only so much, he's he's a leader. And he's going to, you know, change uh, the way that mutants think about themselves and their relationship with humans and stuff like that. And one of the big things that I think is really undermined comic books, specifically, we're talking about superheroes mostly here, DC and Marvel, is that... They've decided they need to justify evil and undermine good kind of in the name of moral ambiguity and realism. That's a harsh, that's a harsh take on it. It's a harsh way to put it. But really it is. It's, um, you know, the good guys aren't so good anymore and the bad guys aren't so bad. And a lot of times, a lot of times, because the writers nowadays just aren't quite skilled enough to to pull these things off that they're trying to do, the bad guys feel like they're right. And the good guys kind of like, what are they doing? Why would you even try to stop this guy? He, he feels like he's pretty justified. You can't even come up with a reason for the character to even want to intervene. You know, we shouldn't be rooting for the heroes to lose. And a lot of this uh, is, is one of the big reasons that I would say that this is the broken era of comic books. Because nothing's really working now. Think about continuity. They brought broken continuity. It's shattered at this point. I just read Hulk number one. The big launch, right? This is the biggest, like, new number one, like, relaunch. They've done it at Marvel Comics. Big time uh, character Hulk coming off a hugely successful run for that character. The first time Hulk's been relevant in decades, probably from since uh, the Greg Pak run, when he, when he had... Um, you know, Planet Hulk, which was so well beloved. Nobody's really done anything cool with Hulk. You get that uh, Immortal Hulk with Al Ewing. We're rebooting it with Donny Cates, bigger name writer, better writer, somebody that does a lot of things that people love. And you put on Ryan Otley, who's coming off of, uh, you know, obviously a run on ASM, which I personally do feel is a little bit disappointing. Um, but that's neither here nor there. But in that comic book, Who's the narrator? Who's the one that's giving us all this information about what the Hulk is now and how the whole mechanism works? It's Doctor Strange. I don't know if you checked out the, the, the shelves on your comic book this or in your comic shop this week. What comic book is up there? The death of Doctor Strange. He's dead. What the hell's going on? Th these things don't match up. They can't match up. You, you've broken continuity. You've bro broken the shared aspect of the universe which is one of the reasons that people get involved in this thing. And they, you know, some people might stay in their one uh, title and stay on their one label. Well, I only like this character. I only maybe like this little corner, but a lot of people buy in hook, line and sinker to this entire shared universe and they don't work. You go over to DC comics. They just had an enormous Batman crossover, Batman, the flagship character for the entire industry. They couldn't figure out how to do the crossover correctly. If you read Batman, Detective Comics, Nightwing, what else we had in there? I Am Batman, 
some of the stories that were in Batman Urban Legends, then I, I probably left one out. I think maybe um, well, Catwoman. I think Harley Quinn might have tied in there. I don't really, I don't know. I don't care about that that title. But um, if you go and read these things, it was a complete clusterfuck. Nothing added up. Nothing made sense. If on the week of the finale of Fear State and Batman, there's also a Nightwing book. You're supposed to read Nightwing before Batman. I did not know that. So I read Batman first, and I saw what happened to Simon Saint at the hand hands of the not of the Robins that had intervened. You know, uh, obviously it was Dick Grayson, it was uh, Jason Todd. Uh, who else was it there? Um, uh, Tim Drake, Barbara Gordon. You see the the end, and it felt out of place. I was like, "Well, I wonder how that happened." I don't. I feel like I missed something. You go in to read Nightwing, and you realize, "Oh, I did miss something." But when you get to the end of that book, you see the fate of Simon Saint in that book. It is completely different than it was in Bat or Batman. the The fear state event itself feels like it's completely different in I Am Batman than it is in Batman. It's not just a, a perspective thing. It's like Who's the villain? Like, who, like, who are we fighting here? And then you find out in Detective Comics, and Josh and I had talked about this in This Week in Batman, is like, this doesn't feel right. This feels like it's happening before the stuff that's in Batman, but we're having tidbits and stuff. And then you find out, yeah, it is technically supposed to be before, but the there are there's information that that is presented in, in Detective Comics that that was actually presented in Batman after that. So even then, it doesn't match up. So they've broken their, their their continuity. Their characters read like parodies of themselves. They've essentially broken the trust of the readers, right? Do you trust Marvel Comics? Do you trust DC Comics at this point when they say that they've got a big event that you have to read? They almost all feel like skipperoonies. I don't, I don't care if DC or Marvel tell me I have to read something. You better tell me the character. You better tell me who the writer is. And if I have any trust in them left, maybe I'll check it out. But even then, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they treat James Tynan's Batman run like it's something special. Go read Fear State and tell me that James Tynan was actually able to, to pull something like, like that off. You can't trust anything they say. You know, this uh, death of Doctor Strange, it's supposed to be important, right? This is the death of Doctor Strange. Yet it's so insignificant, so unimportant that the ramifications aren't even playing out in the rest of the books that are happening at the exact same time. How can you trust these, these people? How can you trust it when they say, this is going to be the most important event in, in uh, you know X-Men history. The Hellfire Gal is going to have ramifications that will affect the entire Marvel Universe. We are months past Hellfire Gala. You tell me what changed about the Marvel Universe. I've seen a couple of stories happen on Mars, whatever this is the new Morocco, that aren't even in X-Men. It's being presented, you know, in other books, specifically Sword. And then nobody in the Marvel Universe is even talking about it. It's like it never happened. Oh, what a mind-blowing event! Why would anybody keep buying into this stuff? You know, they've broken their universes. What does Marvel Comics stand for? It's supposed to be the world outside your window. It feels like it's the world outside of MB MSNBC's window. It doesn't feel like they're trying to present their characters in the real world at all. It's uh, That's why they come off as parodies and caricatures. This feels like if SNL were writing the Marvel Comics universe, this is what we would be reading. You know, one, uh, you know, characters presenting one side would come off as so outrageously corrupt and evil that they'd be twirling their mustaches. And then, uh, you know, and then the characters that they're using their soundboards would, it's just, it's so frustrating. What does the DC Comics universe stand for anymore? Why do why should we go read the DC Comics universe? It most it used to be the most hopeful universe in the world. That was essentially, you know, the heroes were more like gods. You know, even Batman is the bat god. You know, I think he's become a bit of a parody of himself before this. But um, does DC Comics read as hopeful to you? I don't read much hope when I read DC Comics. 
reads like, you know, we're in a dystopian future. Are any of these heroes ever going to win? Batman hasn't won a fight in like fucking three years, man. Three years. They're replacing every single hero that, that they have. The, the DC stuff is the weirdest part. Marvel and DC, while they are superhero comics and they're North American superhero comics, that's about what they have in common. Yes, they do have some uh, knockoffs of each other or whatnot, but they've always felt like completely different universes. DC feels like Marvel seven years ago. Like, what the hell is happening here? And they just continue to break and break and break, and they never fix anything. Well, no, no, I don't want to say never. Okay, we did get DC Rebirth not that long ago when it really felt like Jeff Johns is one of the writers out there that had enough clout and was good enough to really put a lot of these pieces back together and lead a great effort like that. Unfortunately, his time as the chief creative officer just wasn't long enough. He moved on, and as soon as he did, Dan Didio fucking broke it again. Does it feel like Daniel Cherry, Jim Lee, and uh, Marie Javins are the team that's going to put all the all this stuff back together the way it should be? I don't think any of them get their characters. I don't think any of them care about the universe at this point. I think they're just a bunch of glad-handing yes-men hoping not to get fucking fired while they're leading this comic book universe. Does C.B. Sobolski seem like the leader that Marvel needs to fix the issues that they have right now, get their creators back in order, and realize that their heroes should be presented as fucking heroes saving the universe? I think C.B. Sobolski is more interested on where he's going to get his uh, steamed dumplings for lunch. I'll give him credit. At the beginning, he did make some uh, appearances of change. But here we are, you know, years later. Does it really feel like Marvel's changed that much? When I say changed, I mean fixed. Because it was already broken before he, sh he showed up. I'm not going to blame that all on him. You know, C.P. Spolsky's not the guy to fix any of this stuff. Look at the Legion of Doofuses under him. They're the ones that were ruining it before he got to that position. He didn't fire all of them. Have things been broken beyond repair? Absolutely not. We will have the Reconstruction Era where finally somebody is put in charge. We'll get the next Jim Shooter who comes in there, knows how to fucking write comics, knows what these universes stand for. Hopefully it'll be Marvel and DC at the same time, obviously with different versions. But one of them is going to get fixed first. You know, we'll have the next era, the next Shooter Era where he gets things in, in line, you know, realizes who his, his creators are, puts them on the right projects, and then gives them the correct oversight and support to make great stories again. But we're, we're a ways off. They haven't completely wrecked everything. They haven't broken it to the point that even speculators aren't coming in. You know, that's going to happen. They're going to do that. They're going to um, keep doing this, this cycle to where... The only way we can sell ratio variants is if there's a new character introduced. The only way we can sell a ratio variant is if there's some type of sexuality reveal or, or swap on a character or a race swap on a character. They're going to wear this gimmick out too. Eventually, they're going to run out of stuff to do to you know prop up the appearance that they have as many fans as they would like to have. They just don't anymore. You know, obviously, there's a lot of comic book fans, and they come in and they peek in here and there. And I think a lot of times they're disgusted by what they see or disappointed or whatever word you want to you want to uh, you know, use apathetic. And they know that they made the right choice. Eventually, somebody's going to come in here. We're going to get the reconstruction and people are going to peek in and see that they made that, that this is the time to return that maybe there's serious changes that's going on that the characters are being reconstituted, the universes are being fixed, and superheroes will be presented as heroes once again, and villains will be presented as villains once again, and we will have the fight of good versus evil, and evil, and evil will, will fall to good in the end. But we aren't getting that right now. And uh, you know that's why it's a, lot, a lot of this stuff is broken. I definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you consider this era? And if you do think it's the broken hair, what's the most broken part of the, of the comic book industry right now? 
Is it the writing? Is it the oversight? Is it the leadership? Is it distribution? You know, is it the, the quality control? There's a lot of issues out there that just aren't working, in my opinion. So definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you consider this error? Is it as broken as I think it is?